friends from equilibrium global uh tadai and alada i appreciate your efforts in organizing this open format series which provide a platform for experts to share their knowledge and insight it is an excellent opportunity to exchange dialogue about india and its place in the world i eagerly anticipate attending the lectures by professor jagannath pandey director of isdp's stockholm center for south asian and indo pacific affairs on the current geopolitical issue in india in the indo pacific and its relationship with china i am confident that his insights will be invaluable in helping us understand the complex dynamics of this region and with the current with and with the current growth in the indian economy with apple deciding to move its plant into india with uh with the future of having iphone 15 made in india and with india india to be the second uh second economic development partners in the coming near future after china it will be great to hear your insights and understand how this is going to help us and how do we understand this complex dynamic of this region thank you for organizing this series and i look forward to attending future events thank you very much amrita for that uh, introduction great pleasure to be here let me thank uh, you amrita kutniti equilibrium global and um, all the organizing team from peru from argentina and from india uh, a very happy uh, greetings from stockholm it's sunny out here uh, it's not really cold and i could see from indian side i think uh, it's is uh, the temperature is very high i'm not sure about you know about peru and uh, argentina but i'm sure i think uh, this is the most pleasant time of the year um thank you very much for this invitation again and i think um, happy to share my thoughts on indo pacific and india and i think i have been writing about uh, these topics for a long time you could uh, read some of my writings from my website from our institute's website um, and i'll be happy to you know stay in touch for any further questions after the after the event if you have any but uh, let me share with you some of my broad ideas on the topics i think given the broad canvas of the topic about india and indo pacific um few things uh, we need to take a note of as a background uh, one is that when we are talking about any particular country's foreign policy i think um, every country's foreign policy starts from its domestic constituency as uh, amrita you rightly pointed out that uh, you know Uh, india is going through a lot of changes and there are domestic developments in india which is taking place which has wider implications and indian economy is going to emerge as the second largest you know economy in the world and i think if we take into account some of these issues we can easily say that um you know there are a lot of domestic developments within india that is actually very closely linked with the indo pacific uh, politics and indo pacific narrative that is emerging from time to time for some time um i think among the domestic development let me figure out three things that are critical to india's rights one is that i think um, despite of the global economic slowdown despite of the um, slowdown in the uh, you know global economic standards and the because of the pandemic uh, despite of the pandemic impact indian economy is one of those leading economy in the world politics which is on the track so we could say that you know despite of the slowdown in indian economy like the world economy um india is still witnessing a steady rise in its G- gdp and that talks about that uh, even though this is not really very impressive the kind of economy status we should have given our population today we are the largest populous country in the world um but still i think the most of the uh, confidence about indian foreign policy draws from that and i think that is one important aspect we should not uh, you know um forget about the fact that india is one of those rising economy in the world politics which will continue to save the politics i uh, in indo pacific in times to come the second important aspect that we need to keep in mind is that i think 
which is uh, really important is um, uh, the neighborhood politics. And I think um, uh, uh, India's uh, domestic constituencies are very closely li linked with the with the domestic uh, with the neighboring countries and with the neighborhood uh, politics. And therefore, when we are talking about you know India's um, uh, northeast part, India's east part. Uh, they are linked very closely with Southeast Asia, with uh, with with uh, Bay of Bengal, uh, and with a range of politics in Southeast Asia. When we are talking about the southern part of India, that is very closely linked with the uh, with 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 the Indian Ocean politics. Similarly, when we are talking about the northern part, you know, China is the biggest neighbor, yet China is the biggest challenger. So we we have a lot of politics there coming up, boundary disputes to a lot of geopolitics. Um, when it comes to Pakistan, we have classical disputes with Pakistan. So I think each one of these domestic regions have a strong foreign policy, um, you know, uh, linkages uh, when we're talking about India in Indo-Pacific. And uh, each of these provinces have witnessed steady progress despite of the pandemic, despite of the, geo you know, domestic uh, politics, uh, as you know, India is having a uh, federal system. Uh, there is a government in the center. Not every state is having the same government. But still, um, despite of this uh, disunity, despite of this, you know, versatilism in Indian um, federal system, I think when it comes to unity, national unity, all the domestic politics have seen, have, have shown some kind of resilience and some kind of unity in order to face the future. And to that context, I think that has a direct linkages with India's uh, Indo-Pacific outlook. The third aspect is that I think India itself domestically emerging as a preferred destination for a foreign direct investment. If we talk about the world economies, be it um, US, be it Japan, be it you know, Australia, be it South Korea, uh, most of the major economies in the world politics today preferring India as the preferred destination for the investment. And I think that itself making India a very, very attractive. There is a lot of infrastructural developmental program is going on within India. Um, road connections, rail connections, um, you know, um, um, then we have a lot of, in you know, Connectivities uh, uh, developmental programs within the country, a uh, lot of uh, you know uh, new new infrastructural setups when it comes to educational institutions, when it comes to you know India's domestic constituency. So all of these things are positive indications for the international communities, and therefore what we have seen that during the pandemic, a new narrative is emerging in India's favor that India could emerge as a central focal point uh, for the alternative supply chain resilience, um, alternative su supply chain networks. And uh, today we could see that every country in the world are thinking about India. Uh, India planning to take a leading position when it comes to global you know, supply chain or Indo-Pacific supply chain. And I think some of these are the domestic developments. But when we talk about the international development, I think Indian foreign policy is continuously in transition and there, is, there are a lot of new measures are being taken in Indian foreign policy, which should not be really overlooked. And I think I'll just flag out five key aspects in an Indian, Indian foreign policy, um, which is emerging recently uh, and it has a much more current, uh, you know, uh, dimensions attached to it. And that has strategic and clear cut linkages with Indo-Pacific. Uh, first, I think now, as we have seen under the current government in India, um, there is a special focus has been given to the neighbor neighboring countries. And Indian government, India is having a first neighborhood policy, even though there are a lot of debates that you know India's first neighborhood policy is not really going to be successful, and there are still very problems with uh, with with the different uh, neighbors. But I think the most impressive aspect about India's uh, first neighborhood policy is that despite of India's rising demand in the global affairs, despite of India's rise uh, in, in world affairs, including in Indo-Pacific politics, 
I think each one of the smaller, medium-ranked countries in the immediate neighborhood regions have been given equal importance in Indian foreign policy, be it Nepal, be it Bhutan, be it uh, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh. India is giving equal importance to most of these neighbors. And therefore, even though we can be critical about India's you know, um, immediate uh, neighborhood policy or uh, uh, neighborhood first policy, but still there are positivity which needs to be drawn. And the positivity is that India need these neighbors um, in its foreign policy more than, um, um, more than earlier. And I think that is a positive indication which is emerging in Indian foreign policy. The second aspect in Indian foreign policy that needs to be uh, you know, noted about in the context of India and Indo-Pacific is India is giving a lot of importance to connectivity and corridor programs. And I think that itself is an impressive aspect of Indian foreign policy, which is actually linking India with the uh, neighborhood regions and with the Indo-Pacific regions. And when we talk about connectivity and corridor programs, today what we see, India is giving a lot of importance to the coastal development um, uh, regions for the, um, in the Eastern part, in the Southern part, in the Western part, there are special corridor projects are coming up. And those are impressive aspects because that itself establishes the connect between India's domestic uh, regions with the international regions, um, including the Indo-Pacific regions. Um, and I think um, these corridors are also having critical connectivity projects, which is going to uh, link India with the neighboring countries. We have seen that for some time that you know, um, the world is debating about China's Belt and Road initiatives. But what we are forgetting is that India is also having a lot of uh, competitive connectivity policies, be it, uh, you know, the, be it the uh, Spice India ro uh, Spice Road projects, be it uh, the Project Mossum, be it, uh, you know, the corridor connectivity projects or the, you know, um, uh, or the projects which are, uh, India is carrying out with Japan in collaboration with Japan in Northeast India, which is connecting to India's uh, Southeast. Uh, so all of these things suggest that India is giving a lot of importance in its foreign policy uh, to its neighbors and to the Indo-Pacific regions. And uh, therefore, we could clearly see a lot of importance um, is being given to the connectivity issues and the corridor issues. The third thing that we need to also need uh, to mention about Indian foreign policy, which is the highlight aspect, is that I think Indian foreign policy is becoming much more assertive and resilient. And I think uh, what we have seen that um, during the pandemic, uh, there was a lot of problems. There was a lot of challenges from China and India has not really sighed away in terms of challenging China. And I think that itself is a very big um, you know, statement in Indian foreign policy. Um, there was a time when India was trying to address the problem with China, but today what we see, India is you know, eager to face the challenge and stand up to the Chinese challenge. And I think uh, this is what we have been seeing for last few years. And we have seen that in the Duklam incident, uh, we are seeing that in the Golwar incident. So in Indian foreign policy, there is a, turf of aggressiveness and assertiveness along with resilience uh, foreign policy approaches are visible and these are partly um, with regard to the China challenge. Uh, the fourth aspect that needs to be mentioned in Indian foreign policy is that even though everybody talks about Indian foreign policy in Indo-Pacific that Indian foreign policy is you know has moved from um, um, non-alignment to uh, multi-alignment. And I think within that multi-alignment, there is a specific focus about pointed alignment strategy. Uh, and I think you could read my articles. I have been writing about pointed alignment strategy for last uh, three, four years. And I think when we are talking about multi-alignment strategy, um, India is giving specific importance to some of the countries within that multi-alignment strategy. And 
within that multi alignment strategy some of these countries are being special focus when it comes to india's defense diplomacy uh, india's um, you know um, india's economic diplomacy and um, uh, countries like us uh, japan australia the quad countries are emerging special importance and also including some of the other countries including south korea including israel including um, you know some of the asean countries they are emerging as stronger partners and focusing countries focusing partners in indian foreign policy so there is a focus about pointed alignment within the multi alignment strategy and that is something very very impressive about indian foreign policy and i think this small this pointed alignment is more about building india stronger defense and strategic networks be it with us with uh, with uh, japan with australia there are a range of uh, agreements are happening uh, be it a defense centric agreement or security center. for example if we talk about us um with us our our partnership has become very very strong and versatile and with us uh, we are having a stronger security partnerships um there have been four foundational agreement has been signed now we are moving to the next phase so there are a lot of focus which is uh, being visible in indian foreign policy um and also with uh, regard to japan south korea uh, there is a special you know collaborative economic dimension is emerging japan is the only country which is emerging across all the seven or eight states across the northeastern regions and that's that's really impressive uh korea is emerging as a special strategic partnerships with india with a focus on economic collaboration and i think these are some of the uh you know a new developments in indian foreign policy which has been very impressive so within a multi alignment structure we are watching a much more pointed alignment strategy in indian foreign policy and i think the fifth point and my final point um is going to be that i think what we are today looking in indian foreign policy is a lot of focus on the maritime dimension and i think um, as i mentioned earlier that india is focusing a lot about connectivity and coastal development plan in in indian foreign policy today we are seeing that indian foreign policy is focusing a lot about those island chain countries those um, emerging and lower and middle income countries are uh, those indian ocean dream countries and i think those are impressive aspects of uh, uh, impressive aspects of indian foreign policy even though today um, you know um, uh, india is uh, still yet to have a much more stronger navy that could cover the indian ocean to the pacific ocean but i think uh, india is continuously building up its uh, ports uh, its um, you know uh, stationing points across the Ind- indian ocean regions and um, it is actually building of networks with smaller island countries all across the indian ocean and that's one of the impressive aspect of indian foreign policy now if we take into account these five factors five uh, you know features in indian foreign policy what it talks about indian foreign policy on a whole and how does it explain about india as a power and i think there has been a lot of debate about india as a global south power but i would say that the way india is expanding its outreach um there is a, a lot yet to come and we need to wait and i think india is on the right path when it comes to its uh, expanding the global horizons but a lot is yet to come india's outreach in africa is still not very effective india's outreach in latin america in argentina in brazil in peru is still not very strong um india's outreach across the europe is still not very strong Uh, i am based here in europe and um, you know i could clearly see india's outreach in europe is not really that strong it's expanding um it's improving but um, india is still yet to have a stronger uh, outreach program throughout the europe so therefore i think these issues are very um, critical to india's rise um, in in global affairs unless we really see a steady expansion in terms of reaching to each and every regions in the world politics i don't think uh, india would be really in a comfortable position to talk about 
um, it's, it's global influence. And I think what is more important at this moment to um, you know um, uh, uh, remember is that India is still a rising power and India is still a progressive power. So when we are talking about the rising powers, rising powers will continue to struggle, um, but they will give progressive, they will offer progressive trends to world politics. And this is what we are seeing in, in, in Indian foreign policy. Um, even though in some of the regions like Southeast Asia, East Asia, uh, you know, Indian Ocean Rim, in, in the Indian Ocean regions, uh, um, India is still having a very effective outreach program. But when it comes to the wider world affairs, India is still not really an effective power. And I think to that context, uh, to, to that extent, I think uh, India needs to really improve its outreach program, uh, needs to stay connected with the far regions which are not geographically uh, near to India. And uh, to that effect, I think uh, two regions are very critical to India. In fact, three regions. One is the South American regions or the Latin American regions. Second, the African regions. Third, the Central Asian regions. And I think these three specific regions are, of course, very uh, significant to India's rise in world affairs. My final thought, I think, how do you see India in world politics from now on? I think India will express its voice. India will be much more vocal about global issues. India will be much more articulative about global conflicts. Even though on the Russia-Ukraine war, um, you have seen that India is maintaining a, some sort of silence and neutral position. But I know for a fact that there are a lot of back channel discussion is going on between India and Russia and Ukraine. So India will be taking position. India will be articulating and speaking up its mind in, in times to come. And I think that would only improve once India's economic growth is on the right track. And I think uh, what we'll see that once the Indian economy uh, becomes much stronger from uh, right now, we are anticipating that in the next few years, Indian economy is going to touch up on 5 trillion uh, dollars, uh, US dollar uh, economy. But unless we become something of a 10 trillion um, uh, US dollar economy, our outreach will be significantly limited. But with that note, I must express optimism that India's rise is uh, in, in world affairs is becoming a global statement and India is becoming the fulcrum of the Indo-Pacific regions. And the way we are positioning ourselves um, a lot of positivity has to be drawn. And I think the China challenge will continue to emerge stronger. Uh, Pakistan will continue to be a weaker problem. But within this uh, two um, classical problem, uh, India will also face challenges about how to um, you know, provide employment, job opportunities to its young populations, how to put its economy in order, how to really go about you know, um, the growth and developmental plan. And I think much more than that, how to really compete with the Chinese outreach in Europe, the Chinese outreach in Latin America or in, or, or in South America and um, the Chinese uh, competency and Chinese presence in Africa. And I think these are some of the challenges India is going to face in times to come. Um, but at this moment, Indian foreign policy is very much invested in the neighborhood regions. And um, uh, at this moment, Indian foreign policy is very much... Um, um, you know, very much uh, focused on the Indo-Pacific regions with a, um, uh, with a, um, you know, uh, specific, uh, specific focus on, on, on Indian Ocean and maritime issues. And I think that is one aspect which is, um, which is, uh, we have to take, take care of. And I think uh, there we'll see that India focusing a lot on the immediate neighboring countries, be it Sri Lanka, Maldives, or Bangladesh, Bhutan, Nepal, Sri Lanka. And I think what you will see in times to come, India trying to focus and trying to emphasize a lot of importance from neighborhood countries to the extended neighborhood countries and which covers the broader converse of Indo-Pacific. I'll stay here, I'll, I'll stop here and um, uh, welcome your comments and questions if you have any. Thank you.